guys, just a quick recap of all the work we've done uh, so far. We're down to the last fitting, and I say that very hesitantly uh, because I've been saying I needed one last fitting for the past two or three days now. Uh, even though you make a list, you check it twice, you still end up with seven trips to Home Depot, which is six too many for me. We have properly connected the uh, air tanks together. We've twinned them together uh, using three quarter inch galvanized pipe to do all the connections, and then we have the three quarter inch flex line, which is important when you're hard piping to give it some give while the compressors are running. Uh, you don't want all that vibration from the piston and the motor running on the compressors to transfer into the rest of the system. So we've got all that plumbed. We're still waiting on a few boxes to arrive. All the hard piping is done. The paint booth uh, desiccant air dryer uh, system is installed. We, we are gonna have a whole system desiccant air dryer filter regulator combo uh, that we're gonna install as soon as that gets here. So out of the hard pipe goes up, comes over, comes down to a main air shutoff valve. That goes into a drip tee with a half inch ball valve to relieve the pressure and drain the condensated water. And that is well before it goes to our first filter. Uh, now that's gonna be a filter regulator combo and then it's gonna go into a coalescing filter and then a, a desiccant air dryer before it runs into our refrigerated air dryer system. All that goes up, feeds the rapid air uh, max line system throughout the shop and all of the outlets. So we are gonna have filtration. The first filter and regulator is gonna be a five micron filter. Uh, the second one, the coalescing filter, is gonna be a .01 micron filter, and that removes all of the oil and any kind of remaining moisture and debris that got through the five micron filter. Uh, then that goes into a desiccant air dryer with your typical air drying, desiccant air drying beads, uh, and that further reduces the dew point uh, and moisture content to relatively zero. There might be like 4% remaining at that point. I don't know all the scientific details. You can do your own research if you wanna know that stuff. Uh, but it does all that, and I'm doing that before it goes into the refrigerated air dryer. Some might say that's overkill. I think that's not enough because it goes up into our rapid air system and onto the outlets for the majority of the tools, that's gonna to be just fine. However, with some of my more expensive machines and equipment, uh, like my powder coating setup, I don't want any moisture in it whatsoever. Also, we're gonna be doing a lot of paint and body work. Um, any kind of silica or any kind of moisture in those situations, you could be looking at redoing the entire panel or the entire car. We're gonna be doing a whole car, so I don't wanna to leave to chance any kind of moisture getting in the system whatsoever. So for most systems, that type of setup with the uh, filter regulator combo, the coalescing filter, and the desiccant air drying beads will be enough. I'm backing that up with, as I said before, a refrigerated air dryer. I've had that in operation for quite a while. It does a good job, and I'm gonna leave that in the system before it feeds the Rapid Air Max Line system. Once it goes up into the Rapid Air, we got a bunch of T's and outlets all through the shop for hose reels and or uh, wherever I need air in the shop. One of those lines is gonna come back behind me and then down down this wall over here and this feeds that outlet that is a rapid air max line outlet it goes into a its own shutoff valve and then we go into another second five micron filter and then another second coalescing filters 0.01 microns and then we go into the big canister which is a second desiccant air dryer canister that holds two quarts of desiccant air drying beads. Uh, that's not enough. You don't wanna hook your gun up or your air hose straight off a desiccant air dryer. Plus we still need to regulate this air further down for the paint system. So after it leaves the desiccant air drying canister, it goes into a, uh, a third and final or seventh and final, I don't know how many filters I have at this point, but it goes into a final stage filter, which is a half micron, which will filter out any kind of desiccant air dust. So after it leaves the canister, if there's any kind of turbulence working its way around there, or if I just installed those uh, beads, sometimes there's a little bit of uh, dust on them that can get blown through the system. So after that half micron filter, it gets regulated down to a usable pressure. Uh, instead of having 120 PSI through the whole shop, I'll probably turn this one down to 60 or 80 PSI and then feed my line, which will feed my uh, paint sprayer, and I'll have a regulator actually at the gun itself. You always want to regulate as close to the tool as you can. The further away you regulate the pressure, 
the greater the loss over the line. And paint is definitely one of those areas where you want to regulate as late as possible. So that's just a quick wrap up. We're going to be going and installing the last filter regulator combo right before the sandblasting cabinet. Instead of having to run all the way around the shop and mess with this pressure up here, we can do it right there at the sandblasting setup. So anyway, enough uh, rambling. Let's uh, get back to work and finish this whole project up. And as always, I appreciate you guys watching. Be sure to click like, leave a comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notifications. That way you get in touch, in tune with all of the stuff we post as quick as we post it. Once again, we appreciate you watching. And until next time, if you're not going to watch this stuff, why don't you get out in your shop and go build something?